Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two East African pastoralists from the Neolithic time period of Kenya. Uh, they are both from Kenya from uh, the same location. So the names I gave to these two samples are Mohammed, which is a man with Y-DNA E2A and the female is Zuhra and she does not have Y-DNA because she's a woman. She does have mitochondrial DNA, her mitochondrial DNA is L3. Uh, Mohammed's mitochondrial DNA is K1. Let's begin the video. So um, this is what Mohammed is looking like. He's predicted to have brown color eyes, uh, Greek shaped nose and black hair with minus a uh, He does not have blue haplotype 4. Um, everything else in the uh, OCA2 and HERC2 region that's, that's you know blue haplotype 1, 2, 3, that's all undetermined. Uh, however, we can make certain guesses based on his other genotypes in OCA2 region that he probably does not have BH1 or BH2 or BH3. Uh, he does have some Eurasian light skin variants in SLC2485, which is really surprising. Um, I'm guessing that he got these light skin variants from um, Natufians, which are a part of his ancestry. And he does not have East Asian EDAR, and with my eye shape predictor tool, he's predicted to have Estonian or South Asian or Middle Eastern eye shape. Uh, basically, a um, European or West, uh, West Eurasian facial morphology and for hair shape prediction with my hair shape predictor tool he's predicted to have kinky hair. Now we're moving on to Zuhra. Zuhra has got brown eyes just like Mohammed. She's got snub shaped nose which is different from Mohammed. Mohammed's prediction was that he had a Greek shaped nose and she's got black hair just like Mohammed. Uh, what's interesting is she has a genotype in the OCA2 region that's often predictive of blue eye haplotype 1 in Europeans but since she is genotyped for the BH1 uh, variation she does not have blue eye haplotype 1 so it's just kind of a dislinkage or some kind of interesting thing going on here where she has a genotype that's usually predictive of blue eye haplotype 1 in Europeans however she does not actually have blue eye haplotype 1 uh, her eye shape prediction based on 12 SNPs is that she has sub-Saharan African eye shape and her hair shape prediction based on 3 SNPs is that she has curly hair followed by kinky followed by wavy and last uh, last place comes straight hair texture what's interesting is she actually has some light color variants in Keto G, Tirp 1 and even SLC45A2 uh, that have to do with uh, light or kind of Eurasian skin tone so it's interesting that it's possible both of them have some variants for light skin both Zuhra and Mohammed for the GD match results we're gonna look at Mohammed I'm not gonna show you Zuhra because Zuhra scores pretty much the same exact thing as Mohammed I would just be showing you two identical results which is I think no fun this is what Mohammed scores with MDLPK11 modern as you can see um, he's scoring 44% African which really means sub-saharan African in this context and the rest is basically southwest Eurasian um, Middle Eastern like admixture and with the Oracle you can see he's getting modeled as a mixture of Natufian plus Denisova or Natufian plus Neanderthal or Natufian plus various uh, basically various um, non-sapien hominids why is that the reason for that is because in this Oracle there actually is not a reference for sub-saharan and Africans and the Denisova and Neanderthals score 100% sub-Saharan African with this calculator uh, and pretty much with every other calculator as well uh, where there is a sub-Saharan African category they are going to score 100% sub-Saharan African and basically just replace the Denisova and Neanderthal in this result with African or sub-Saharan African and it's going to make sense by the way something you might not expect you might not have known this you, you just learned this in, the, in this video that Neanderthals and Denisovans out of all modern humans resembled most sub-Saharan Africans. There you go, you just learned something new. This is what he scores with MDLPK16 Modern. As you can see here, he's basically a mixture of East African, Near East and North African. And there's also a little bit of Caucasian here. Look at that, there's 10.3% Caucasian. And um, you remember with the MDLPK11 um, Oracle, there was 3.5% EHG, which is really Cocos Hunter Gatherer affinities, Cocos Hunter Gatherer specific drift. So he does have some Cocos Hunter Gatherer affinities with all of these calculators not only this but with all the other calculators too and he's closest to Ethiopians with the Oracle who are a mixture of sub-Saharan African and uh, Southwest Eurasian and he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Ethiopian plus Somali or uh, is there anything that we can see that's pretty cool here not really he's just he just looks like a very typical East African maybe a little bit shifted towards um, sub-Saharan Africans because he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of uh, Jewish from Ethiopia plus Biaka pygmy or Afa from Ethiopia plus Biaka Pygmy, but maybe these groups Afa and Jewish from Ethiopia, maybe they're a little bit more Eurasian shifted, I'm not sure. Uh, he seems like a pretty typical Ethiopian to me. This is what he scores with Harappa World. And here he's scoring uh, actually 9% Caucasian, but also mostly a mixture of Sub-Saharan African and uh, Middle Eastern groups. And he's uh, getting modeled as a mixture of Amhara plus San, so a mixture of 
uh, Amhara from Ethiopia plus um, South African hunter-gatherers, San or Kung, they are both South African hunter-gatherers. Um, and this is what he scores with PunDNA LK10 engine. I think this calculator shows the split better than any other calculator. Uh, basically 46% or half Sub-Saharan African and the other half is ENF, CHG, all of the um, Southwest Eurasian Middle Eastern components together. Uh, make up the half of his ancestry and the other half is basically sub-Saharan African admixture. Uh, I think this calculator shows it even better than G um, Gidrosia's ancient Eurasia K6. With the Oracle, he's closest to Ethiopians once again. Keep in mind, this is an individual from Kenya, not from Ethiopia, from Kenya. Nowadays, Kenyans are very black. So nowadays, Kenyans um, have only a minority of ancestry from an individuals like this and the majority of their ancestry is black sub-Saharan African But this individual is from Kenya. He's actually resembling Ethiopians more so than Kenyans Which is kind of interesting and he's getting more as a mixture of Maasai plus Bedouin And this is what he scores with um, ancient Eurasia K6. This is the calculator I was talking about earlier here He's actually scoring only 35% Natufian, but that's because actual Natufians score not 100% Natufian but like nine like 80 or 70% Natufian that's because this calculator is just not very really good so he's scoring 35% Natufian here and he's getting modeled as a mixture of Maasai plus Jews from Yemen or Maasai plus Saudi or line number three is actually Somali from uh, plus Georgian so with this calculator he's actually even a little bit Caucasian or a little bit um, more northern shifted and finally this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3 as you can see here it's a pretty even split between sub-Saharan African and West Eurasian components uh, basically uh, that's what he is he is half um, ancestral East African like Mota for example and the other half of his ancestry is Natufian uh, Southwest Eurasian now we'll be taking a look at the results with my uh, trade predictor tool which is on my website and also on my github uh, you will be able to find this tool on my website and if you don't know what my website is look up megagenics in google or go to my account ch youtube account description page read about me page and you're gonna find the link there uh, so he's got ct genotype and maoa's rs6323 which means Lower activity of the MAOA enzyme, basically what a year genotype. And uh, what a year genotype, from my understanding, is a very non-African. Actually, it's a very stereotypically European genotype to have. And what it does is it basically reduces the activity of the MAOA or COMT enzyme. In this case, he's not genotyped for the COMT enzyme. So on, on, the only thing we can go off here is the MAOA uh, genotype. And he's got lower activity of the MAOA enzyme. Therefore, um, worse breakdown of dopamine, more dopamine react, more dopamine building up in a system and um, advantages in attention tasks and motivation which come together with having more dopamine and slower dopamine breakdown however disadvantages when it comes to stress resiliency and uh, stuff like you know the, the reason it's called a warrior versus warrior gene is because the warrior genotype tends to uh, produce a uh, um, ability to concentrate and do do well with attention whereas the uh, warrior genotype tends to lead to a uh, better stress resiliency so in his case He's got worse stress resiliency, but advantages in attention tasks. And he's got CT here in DRD1, which is a very typical genotype associated with high rods of bipolar and schizophrenia. And um, he's got AG in this variation of DRD3, which is mostly a Eurasian genotype. So once again, this is something that's pretty non-African to have. And it uh, leads to a slight increase in the risk of autism and autistic personality traits. He's got CT genotype here, so short form 5 HTC LPR. He does not have long form 5 HTC LPR. Uh, short form 5 HTC LPR means slight increase in the risk of depression uh, compared to the long form. Uh, actually, it's a slight compared to the average. Compared to the long form uh, 5 HTC LPR, it's a very significant increase. But most people have short form, so compared to the average, it's just a slight, slight, slight increase. Um, does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. Well, nothing is surprising here. He's not a European. TT here, which uh, leads to lower levels of empathy as well as higher odds of autism spectrum disorder. For diabetes, he's got CC genotype here, which basically means like normal, doesn't have a increase in the risk of type 1 diabetes, or alternatively, the way it's written here, sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes, but what, what it doesn't say here, what I did not say here, and I'm thinking maybe I will change that sometime in the future, uh, is that it's a sevenfold decrease rel relative to the opposite genotype, not relative to the average. Relative to the average, it's just a slight decrease. Um, does not have the G allele here, which would prevent him from... Uh, myopia protecting from myopia and uh, the GLU here is very European so it's not surprising he's not a European does not have micro P this is Mohammed right so this is this is the guy yeah so this is the guy he does not have uh, he does not have micro P and I'm not gonna spell it out for you because 
YouTube doesn't like uh, YouTube doesn't like me spelling this word out. It's uh, very advertiser unfriendly. Uh, slightly increased cranial size and 1% higher IQ. Uh, one fat gene variant in FTOs. Uh, RS9939609. So he has one fat gene variant. Same as me. I also have one fat gene variant here. Uh, no variants for increased pain sensitivity. Higher odds of meth induced psychosis. Not a carrier of albinism type 1B. Uh, I, so far, I've never seen, I haven't seen any any samples that were carriers for any of the albinism mutations. So, you know, nothing is surprising here. Uh, let's look at polygenic risk scores for him. And for him, the polygenic risk scores are as such. Um, 1.5 times the average odds of schizophrenia for Northern Europeans. So slightly higher odds of schizophrenia. He's got a... Um, Slightly higher odds of type 2 diabetes, and he's got below average odds of Alzheimer's, is what it seems like. Did I skip the Alzheimer's section? Yeah, I did, because none of his stuff is found here. But this is genotype is found here, and it slightly decreases the odds of Alzheimer's. There's a couple of other genotypes that play a role in the calculation that are not on the screen. Um, but I probably I probably uh, skipped through the Alzheimer's because I didn't see anything genotyped here. So let's see. Uh, this, is, this is our Mohammed. What about his uh, ethnic calculator results? Let's look at that. Okay, so for the ethnic calculator results, this is what he scores. 89% uh, African. Well, um, my calculator, it has a little bit of a problem with the African genomes. It tends to really overestimate the amount of African admixture. Um, so, it, because like Tafarout, for example, scores with my calculator, Tafarout scores <coughs> something like 70% uh, African. So keep that in mind. Uh, he is scoring some Levant. He is scoring some Northwest European. And he's actually scoring some Melanesian, which is very interesting. Okay, so let's reset all that. We're going to reset everything here. And we're going to start with, uh, we're going to start with Zuhra. Okay, we're gonna wait until it finishes um, processing. Okay, we're go. Okay, so Zuhra does not have any no-go learning variants in the two spirofinance pro, which is not surprising. Uh, slightly higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Nothing is surprising here. Um, Europeans are the only people who have no-go learner variants. Uh, she does not have long form 5-HTTLPR. Once again, short form 5-HTTLPR, slightly higher odds of depression. Same as Mohammed. Uh, does not carry European lactose persistence mutation. Um, GG here, which means two variants for lower odds of type 2 diabetes. There's a couple other uh, variations that are used in the prediction for type 2 diabetes risk, but uh, this is the only one that's showing up on the screen. Okay, uh, CC here, which leads to increased risk of Alzheimer's, and AA here, which leads to decrease odds of Alzheimer's disease. Very interesting. Uh, but this genotype, you see here, it's a, uh, it's like a, it's a pretty significant genotype, right? Um, it's the the odds ratio for CC genotype here is something like, something like 3.8 or 3.7. So it's it's a pretty significant genotype to have. I'm predicting that she's gonna have a high risk score for Alzheimer's. Uh, does not have the GLU here, which would prevent protect her from myopia. Uh, ooh, look at that. Okay, okay, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so she's um, she's got homozygous genotype here, and she has she has micro p. Okay, that's crazy. Uh, I'm not sure if this if this is um legit because it's supposed to be a pretty rare genotype. It's supposed to be a pretty rare gene. I've seen I've seen it a couple of times. You know what's interesting? Uh, with the samples I've made videos on, I've already seen like six people with micro p out of the four hundred. Out of the 400 something samples I've made videos on, I haven't seen anybody with homozygous genotype for it yet. Nobody with homozygous genotype. Every every person with micro P I've seen so far has had heterozygous genotype. Nobody with homozygous. So that's very interesting. But it's not going to matter for her all that much because she's a woman. It's you know she doesn't have a P to begin with. But it's a very interesting genotype right here. Uh, no fat gene variants in FTOs RS 99 39 609. Uh, no variance for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. And, well, we're going to look at her polygenic risk scores right now. But this micro P, that's crazy. Oh, that's crazy, man. I should, like, include that in, uh, in the thumbnail. 
So she's got a below average auto schizophrenia for Northern Europeans and below average auto schizophrenia for Sub Saharan Africans. She's got pretty much average odds of diabetes. And as I've said previously, uh, she's got high odds of Alzheimer's. This was pretty easy to predict with her genotype here. Uh, with this genotype right, right here, uh, you're probably going to have pretty high odds of Alzheimer's. And uh, let's check her ethnic calculator results. What does she score here? So here she also scores overwhelmingly African, 91.8% um, African. And out of the non-African groups, she's scoring once again Levant, and Middle Eastern Jewish, and Northwest European, and nothing else pretty much. Okay, nothing else. So um, that's all there is to it. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's 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 pretty it's pretty. I like making these videos, but I would appreciate if you left left a like and uh, supported me here with uh, my quest to do every single ancient DNA sample that exists. And you can download the file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. I think I might have said this previously, but you can download the file, both the files from link which is in the description. Uh, and uh, goodbye, guys.